everyone welcome to excess prescripta i am myself kritika physiotherapist in this new series of educational videos today we are going to detailly learn about adhesive capsulitis adhesive capsulitis is a common shoulder pathology and it's also called as frozen shoulder Let's understand more detailly about adhesive capsulitis. So adhesive capsulitis is an inflammatory disease characterized by synovial inflammation and fibrosis of the joint capsule and manifesting pain and progressive loss of joint range of motion. As the name implies synovial inflammation. So this disease mainly affects the synovial joints. Uh, among all the synovial joints, why it affects mainly the shoulder joint? why not other joint let's see the reasons to know the reason we have to know the anatomy of shoulder joint and its capsule shoulder joint is the only synovial joint that is most mobile and least stable to provide better mobility naturally the capsule of the shoulder joint is become very thin and it has high extensibility and the shoulder joint capsule is a lax fibrous sheet which contains very least blood and nerve supply but it was rich in fibroblast cells so these fibroblast cells are highly responsive to inflammation and it reacts easily with inflammation so that only in adhesive capsulitis the synovial inflammation mainly targets the shoulder joint but why only the shoulder joint having this rich amount of fibroblast actually every synovial joint is having more amount of fibroblast but among all the synovial joint joint little bit shoulder joint having high quantity because these fibroblast cells produce more amount of type 1 collagen and the type 1 collagen consist of fibrin and elastin as a extracellular matrix protein so these fibrin and elastin produce more amount of elasticity flexibility and extensibility to the shoulder joint capsule so to provide better mobility we need more amount of fibroblast so this is why our shoulder joint having more amount of fibroblast cells and that's why it's more prone for having adhesive capsulitis i hope everyone is clear about this why we need to learn about adhesive capsulitis because it has high prevalence rate 2 to 5 percentage of general population are having adhesive capsulitis and women are more prone than men due to menopause and some hormonal imbalances and the common affecting age group was 40 to 60 years and very important thing is 17 percentage of the people who are having adhesive capsulitis in one shoulder will have high chances to develop adhesive capsulitis in the contralateral shoulder within 5 years so any temporary pain management or medical or surgical management is not enough perfect physical therapy rehabilitation is very essential and important and it's a permanent solution for treating adhesive capsulitis and also to prevent the recurrence now we are going to learn about risk factors of adhesive capsulitis see risk factors are very important because these are the main culprits for developing adhesive capsulitis so treating the risk factors is very important rather than treating the symptoms alone so there are three main risk factors first one is systemic factor and second is extrinsic and third is intrinsic this so let's see systemic factors so first one was diabetes mellitus and hypo and hyperthyroidism and hyperlipidemia and breast carcinoma and the extrinsic factors includes mainly the sedentary behavior cerebrovascular accident and prolonged immobilization and any cervical disc pathologies and the third was intrinsic factors it includes any repetitive shoulder injuries these risk factors produce more and more inflammation in our body and also it is responsible for increase the proliferation of fibroblast cells we all know that fibroblast cells are easily react with inflammation so this is why the people who are having these risk factors are more prone for developing adhesive capsulitis now let's see the stages of adhesive capsulitis it has three main stages first stage was freezing stage or painful stage it is mainly characterized by synovial inflammation and manifesting mainly the pain and the second stage was frozen stage or stiffness stage it is characterized by fibrosis of the joint capsule and it is manifesting mainly the stiffness and some little bit of pain 
and the third stage was thawing stage or resolution stage it is characterized by spontaneous resolution of the symptoms why the patient develops pain only at the first stage and why the stiffness is developing at the second stage and the pain was little bit reduced and in the third stage the symptom was spontaneously resolved some people are saying the pathophysiology of adhesive capsulitis is very unclear and, and it is still in debatable and it's still in research because most of the people doesn't know the exact mechanism of adhesive capsulitis so they portray this as a mysterious disease but the truth is the pathophysiology of adhesive capsulitis is very clear and it is very much interesting we will thoroughly discuss the pathophysiology in our upcoming videos so stay tuned i hope this video was very much useful to you if you like this video subscribe to our channel and share this with your friends thanks for watching